I'm notorious for relying on a single four-man element to clear derelicts and battle NPC ships in Space Haven, yet I manage to succeed most of the time. I'd like to think that means I know a thing or two about boarding derelicts and enemy vessels. Unless it's all just lucky RNG. Either way, I'm going to share some of those lessons I've learned over about a thousand hours of time played in Space Haven. We're going to approach this like preparing for a military operation, but informally, so kind of like an operations order. We're going to perform intelligence preparation at the battlefield. We're going to equip an away team and conduct pre-combat checks and inspections. We'll do a little bit of initial mission planning and maneuver to the vessel. Then we're going to assault the vessel, call for fire support, do CQB actions, perform medical evacuations. We'll learn how to handle prisoners and non-combatants and perform sensitive site exploitation. Quite the full plate. I suspect this will be quite a long one, but I'll create chapters for convenience sake for you. Conducting intelligence preparation of the battle space begins with traveling in hyperspace. We can glean much of the information we need for the situation section of an operations order. Starting with weather. Space has many hazards and it's important to know what you're jumping into. Nebulas will drain all shields in a sector. Micrometeoroids will punch holes in your hull without shields and potentially hit your craft and cause them to lose oxygen. Solar flares will potentially set your entire crew on fire and siren worlds are a hot mess. Also note how close that system is to the star. You may have to deal with high ambient temperatures rendering parts of your ship uninhabitable. If the target is located in a siren world, you're racing against the clock to achieve your objective and jump out of the system. Efficiency and speed become paramount. Let's evaluate the target vessel by first identifying whether it's a ship or a station. Visually, this is pretty easy by looking at an asteroid foundation. That's a station. While this provides more avenues of approach and often more breaches, your shuttle will likely have to dock further away making exfills potentially risky if there isn't an airlock. Note the location of hull breaches, airlocks, and central voids. If there are no external breaches, you will have to go through an airlock. If there happens to be no external breaches and no airlocks, but there's a central void, you can still dock outside of the target and move in through that void. However, we'll talk through how to plan your operation based off breach and airlock placement on the target later. Next, we need to identify the enemy forces. Through visual inspection, we can generally determine what foes we may encounter without seeing into the vessel. You may encounter hostile former crew, aliens, or robots, but you may be lucky and have an empty derelict. You should assume the worst, though. The first step is looking at the name of the ship and its prefix. If it's red, it was owned by a hostile faction and any of the former crew plastered to the walls will be hostile, but those in hypersleep chambers will be friendly. This tells us how to deal with humans on the vessel. If we see evidence of robot threats like this structure, we know we'll have fighters produced and launched against us while we're assaulting the vessel. If you're lacking sufficient fighter support or point defense turrets, you may want to clear this derelict with haste as they'll be deconstructing any facility on the ship to build those fighters. You'll likely encounter hamsters that engage you with inaccurate lasers and chimps which engage in devastating melee attacks. Avoid destroying these enemies at close range since they detonate on death. If we see alien infestors on the hull of the target vessel, aliens will be the primary threat. However, those are not always present and looking for any visible alien environment in the breaches or visual cues for spore eruptions indicates alien presence. Once you jump into that system, the timer starts for any alien eggs on that vessel, so the threat will continue to grow until you assault that vessel and destroy the eggs. The crawlers cannot traverse open voids, but haulers will. The previous inhabitants of the vessel gone derelict may be plastered to the wall in alien environments. Remember, they may be hostile if you're at war with their faction. Otherwise, they may offer to join your crew, or may be taken as refugees in some cases. We'll talk about that in a later section about detainee. We don't know what the strength of the enemy is, but depending on how far to the right we are in the galaxy, the stronger the threat. 
Assume more enemies the further you get into the galaxy. If we think about friendly forces, while we can have fighter support from our own fleet to handle other small craft and shuttles, they can't support the away team with strafing attacks at this time. However, if you have rocket turrets, they can provide close air support by barraging an area on the target vessel. This is useful for clearing alien environments or covering your away team's retreat as they return to the shuttle. Sometimes the rocket turrets can create a new breach in the hull, but it's not always reliable. Note that this tactic will destroy potential salvage. This is done by the weapons console, so ensure you have the weapons console manned for the duration of the operation and personnel on standby to resupply the turrets. You may also have other neutral or friendly factions who may decide to board the same target vessel. They'll announce their intent to board up here. Now that we've evaluated this situation, let's set up our boarding party. While I base all of this off of a four-man element, this can always be scaled up to larger boarding parties using multiple shuttles. Now that that disclaimer is out of the way, we can start from scratch. Let's talk about how to build an optimal away team. Generally, we want a crew with high bravery stats, high zest, or high perception with lots of weapon skill potential. However, you're often stuck with whatever the roles give you at the beginning, so send who's available and fill out a shuttle to board. First, we need to equip our boarding party. Let's go through your away team members one by one and ensure they're equipped with the best equipment available for the specified objective. To do this, select the crew member, click the inventory menu, look at the inventory slots to ensure a primary weapon is equipped if able, check the secondary weapon, and if available, equip body armor. You can do this by clicking the drop down menu on each of these line items here. If it's red, you cannot equip it because you do not have the skill. Otherwise, you can. As your research progresses or you progress further into the galaxy, you may get laser or plasma weapons. These are excellent for eliminating the enemy, but not so good at ensuring surrender. If your goal is to destroy the enemy, use plasma weapons to melt their faces. But if you aim to capture prisoners, maybe use ballistic weapons. That covers their individual equipment but support equipment is good to have. I'd recommend having one oxygen tank equipped on a crew member just in case the engagement is lengthy and the airlock is too far to reach for an oxygen resupply. Better to have and not need. You may want to take a high bravery crew member who only has one potential skill point in weapons and equip them with a remote control and three sentry guns. This can help establish a foothold on your primary breach point. We'll talk about that later. Now that we know the boarding party is properly equipped, let's look at their vitals and set up command and control. I'd recommend getting your crew on the same schedule before engagement so they're all on the same energy level when it's go time. Check their health and stamina. If they're wounded, it will negatively affect their accuracy and less stamina means they can be knocked unconscious faster than other crew members. If you have time, force an hour or two of leisure and then take a quick power nap for only a few hours to recover stamina before launching. Next, we'll set up our command and control of the away team. Like many real-time strategy games, selecting your crew member and pressing the control plus one or any other number will assign selection of that crew member to that hotkey. I recommend setting up a hotkey for all four crew members as a single group under the number three. Pair up two crew and assign them to one then pair up the other two and assign them to two. This way you can split your crew into two fire teams to quickly clear a room while maintaining security in a hallway, or select all and get them moving to the shuttle for a quick evac. There are also a few keys that can help in managing your crew during engagements. Let's draft one of our crew. First, we'll issue a series of waypoint move orders by holding shift and right-clicking in two different locations. If you see a hostile move into view while your crew is following your waypoint, press X to have them halt. This is often faster than trying to right-click on a specific enemy. Next, let's put our cursor in the opposite direction they're currently facing and hit the C key. This will make your crew orient in that direction. I mainly use this feature to orient my individual away team members to cover different sectors of fire. Fog of war is a real problem. We've completed our pre-combat checks and our pre-combat inspections with a little drill included. 
Let's look at our target vessel and plan our operation with eventual maneuvering. This derelict has an airlock on this end, but also has an exterior hull breach here and here. We'll plan to assault through the objective starting at the airlock and establish phase lines at each breach. These phase lines will allow us to move the shuttle up to that location since we know everything back towards the airlock is clear and we'll have a quick evac point if we need it. It's always good to have an exit strategy if you walk into a room and find five haulers about to charge your team. Now let's maneuver to the objective. Let's load our team onto the shuttle by drafting them, right clicking on the shuttle, and clicking this icon. Once they're on board, select the shuttle, click dock, and left click on the target vessel's airlock. Note you can dock in any empty tile on the ship's canvas. Once docking is completed, this icon will change and you can click it to unload everyone at the same time. This is where we need to react to contact or the lack thereof. Now we're going to assault the vessel. The first action on the objective is to secure the breach point. This may just be orienting your crew towards the nearest opening you suspect hostiles may be, but it could be establishing a defensive posture at the breach by setting up sentry guns and moving your crew to cover. You do this by selecting a crew member with the remote control, ensuring they have the remote control equipped, middle mouse clicking on the tile you want to deploy a sentry turret, and then left clicking on the box located here. You can set up three turrets this way and have a good amount of firepower. Most derelicts are small, so just moving forward and clearing a room is your next step. If we have time to deliberately clear this vessel, select your crew and right click on the door. So we'll send one of your crew to open it so you can see what's on the other side. However, we can take another approach. Well, we can just barge through that door by ordering everyone to walk through. Let's try a little room clearing, GWAT CQB style. Pause the game and stack up your crew on either side of the door. Press C to have them look at an angle into that room waiting for the door to open. Right click on the door with your breacher and the door will open when you unpause. With that door open, wait a few seconds to see if there's contact with the threat. Now we need to clear the room. Set up your crew with their sectors of fire and get them stacked up on the door. Select the first man in the stack and right click to open the door. This will reveal what your crew members can see. Pause the game and let's set up some orders. First man in the stack will enter the room. Hold shift and right click on the first point of dominance. Hold shift and press C to shift their sector of fire towards the middle of the room. Set the second man to go the opposite direction of the first man in the stack and do the same thing. The third and fourth can follow closely or remain in position covering that door opening or watch other doors to avoid us getting flanked. Unpause and allow your breach to take place. If you encountered a hostile, select your crew and hit the X key to cause them to halt or right click on the enemy and have them engage immediately. If you successfully clear the room, get your crew in position to defend that room or move on to the next. Rinse and repeat. If the threat is too great, fall back to the previous room. If you kept your two crew in a defensive posture, your two breachers can retreat out of that line of fire while the other two cover that door. If the enemy pursues you, you've created a fatal funnel in that door where they'll have to cluster into a single tile. This can be an incredibly effective strategy against all enemies. First contact should confirm what enemies occupy that vessel and we can set the pace of our room clearing off of that information. If it's aliens, you're racing against eggs hatching and destroying the alien hive cores is your primary objective. Locate the alien environment and look for the alien hive core. If it's robots, get ready for them to bum rush you. Keep your distance and engage at range. If it's an NPC faction, you can take your time and be deliberate, unless your objective is to save prisoners or slaves before they suffocate. Remember to reposition your shuttle for a speedy evac at your phase lines if other breach points are available. If you need to delete an alien hive core from a distance, you can call for fire support from the rocket turrets on your ship. With a crew member manning the weapons console and rockets loaded into the turret, go to the tactical menu and click on the rocket icon. Pan over to the target alien hive core and left click to drop the rocket target on it. Keep your boarding party at a safe distance. 
to observe the battle damage since these explosions will saturate the area. Those aren't precision strikes. This can also be done if you're retreating from an enemy force. While retreating, use the same process to lead the pursuing force and saturate the area they will be, rather than where they were, while your crew retreats to the shuttle. This may be highly effective and turn the tide of the battle, so I'd recommend setting up a defensive perimeter at the shuttle instead of immediately evacing, unless the team is so beat up they wouldn't survive another encounter. Remember, this will destroy facilities in the saturation area, reducing the salvage to rubble. Okay, let's talk about medevac or medical evacuation. Let's say one of your crew becomes incapacitated or seriously wounded in a fight. We don't have field medicine in the game yet, so we need to get them back to our ship. If they have open wounds, they will continue to lose health. If they still have stamina, they're ambulatory and can walk themselves back to the shuttle. If they're incapacitated, select one of your crew, right click on the downed crew member and click this icon to pick them up. You can also hold shift and right click on the shuttle to queue up both picking up the crew member and dropping them off at the shuttle without micromanaging it. If they don't have open wounds, they can continue fighting, but watch their health or they may be killed with a few hits. If you're continuing the fight, remember to replace the shuttle to enable a speedy retreat while your casualty is transported back to your ship. If you only have one shuttle, well, Godspeed away team. Let's talk about some prisoners and non-combatants you may encounter. During your clearing operations on a derelict or enemy ship, you may have hostiles surrender, encounter prisoners or slaves, or just find non-hostile NPCs plastered to a wall. You may even find crew in hypersleep chambers that will join you. Let's go through each of these and talk about how to manage them. Whether you're assaulting an NPC ship and fighting their crew or find a hostile faction's NPC plastered to an alien wall cocoon, if you don't kill them outright, they may surrender and have this white flag. Right click on the surrendering NPC and click on the dialogue option. They'll give you a little speech about how they'll get you next time and become your prisoner. Right click on the prisoner and click on the plus icon to have them follow your crew member. Do this with all of your newly acquired prisoners and then right click on your shuttle to board it. All of these prisoners will enter the shuttle with that crew member and you can fit more than four prisoners on a shuttle. It reminds me of a saying in the army, how many privates can you fit in the back of a truck? One more. Handling them on your ship is a topic for another video. Any slaves or non-hostile prisoners you encounter can be freed and will become refugees. Refugees will make their way to your nearest non-drafted shuttle and extract on their own. However, freeing slaves before securing the entire ship can be a benefit as they'll likely fight their captors. Right-click on one of those slaves and click this broken handcuff icon to free them. This may get them killed in the ensuing battles though, but it can be a force multiplier if they're not your primary objective. If you're a little more nefarious. You can take their slaves as your own, or prisoners as your own. Remember, if these people were plastered to the wall by aliens, they will be infested and may suffer a seizure on your ship. But you can reference my spore eruptions in you video for details on that. Next, we're going to perform a little sensitive site exploitation. The final step after clearing a ship is to secure any lootable items. This can be done while room clearing before you clear the ship and I advise doing that in case you have to abort the clearing operation and leave the system. At least you'll have a little more money in your pocket. There are a few items you can directly loot on ships. Currency, data logs, weapons, and slave collars. The currency and data logs are looted by right-clicking on them and clicking the hand icon to pick it up. These will immediately be added to your global inventory or unlock a new data log for more lore. Sometimes neutral and PC factions will have missions for recovering these data logs, but looting them in the same manner will complete the mission if you have it. This means you can actually complete those missions without clearing the entire derelict at times. Other items like weapons and slave collars can be picked up by standing on that tile, navigating to the inventory screen for your crew member and dragging that item from the ground to your empty inventory slot. They will need an appropriate skill level to wield that weapon though, so, upgrade when you can, but you can still transfer those weapons from a derelict if you clear it. 
That about wraps up a fairly comprehensive primer on boarding derelicts or enemy vessels. While there is always more to expand on with these topics, this should give you a framework to plan your boarding operations off of and some goals for setting up an away team. I've been pretty successful running four-man boarding parties that can handle most any problem, but if you want to scale this up to an eight-man element, by all means, make it easier. Good luck in your murder hobo adventures in space, and if you have any questions or you want to add anything to the topics covered, throw a comment down below or hop on the official Bug Bite Space Haven Discord server linked in the description below. I'll catch you in the next one. Buh bye bye